Welcome to this series of short tutorials covering different aspects of InDesign with me, Dan Duran. In this tutorial, I'll be covering setting up a document in InDesign using the Blurb Book Creator plugin. First of all, I'm going to create a project folder. I'm going to press Apple Shift N. I'm going to name this. Obviously, you're free to name it whatever you wish. I'm going to open that directory up and I'm going to create two more directories. One for my images, which I'm going to call images, and another one for my project files. Now, in InDesign, it's really important that you keep all your content all in the same place, especially if you're going to work in an environment where you might need to go to a different machine or work in a different classroom if you're in education. So it's worth keeping all your images that you use in one directory. So I like to make a, a project folder, and then everything that I use I contain in one place. Okay, I'm just going to close that down now, and I'm going to go into InDesign. I've already opened it to save some time, but it's this purple icon here. Um, the icon differs in different versions of CS Suite. Let's click on that. You might be confronted uh, by a welcome screen, which will look something like this. Um, now, I'm not going to go into um, all the kind of what this does, but um, I, don't, I don't personally like this. So I'm just going to close that. And now we need to go to the Blurb Booklet Creator, which is under File, Blurb Booklet Creator. Now, if you haven't installed this, I'm just going to quickly show you where that is on Blurb site. So if we go to Firefox. Now, this is the page that shows you all the types of books and create different shapes and sizes. Um, but what we need to do is we need to go and navigate to Adobe InDesign plugin and download that for InDesign. So I'm going to click on that quickly. Now on this page you'll see all the information relating to the Blurb plugin. But we, we're just going to need to download that, so I'm going to go download plugin. And once this screen is loaded, it takes a little bit of time. Um, you choose the version of InDesign you have, in which case this is CS3, and the operating system, uh, 10.4. Um, obviously, you're free to choose whichever ones and then hit download plugin. And once that's downloaded, you need to install that plugin um, and then reboot uh, up um, InDesign before you can start. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize that, go back to InDesign. <clears throat> okay, so like I was saying, you go File, Blurb Book Creator. I'm going to open that up. And instead of the um, File, New, document dialog box opening up, we get this dialog box which gives you a number of options. Now first of all we're going to have to do start book and it's going to be untitled so we can call this demo book. The author, you're free to put in that. The book size, well I'm going to show you standard portrait um, but you, there again you can see all the different options available. Now paper type, now at this point it's not too um it's not too much of a problem to change paper type, but it is worth remembering that um you have to do the cover of the book after you've chosen the paper, because the papers are different thicknesses and that will obviously affect the thickness of the book. We're just gonna go standard for the time being. Um cover, well I'm just gonna leave it perfect bound soft cover for the time being, and I can always come back and change that. Um twenty pages is fine. So as you can see, this section has now opened up and I can choose some options. So I can create template, which I'm going to do. And it's asking me where to save it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the desktop, project demo project folder, and then project files. And I'm going to put in, in here, version 1. I'm going to leave the name as it's suggested. It doesn't really matter too much. And hit save. And that's going to create a new InDesign document and save it into that project folder that I've created. It's going to take a little bit of time to do this. Okay, so that's what that's done now. And now this dialog box stays up um, because it's asking you whether you want to create a cover. What I suggest is we deal with the book first and then come back and create the cover afterwards. So I'm just going to hit OK. Okay, so there's a number of differences. I mean, we've got the pages. Um, like um, in a normal document down here. What it's done is it's, um, if I just click on the background and zoom out one, oh, let's go zoom out again, you can see it's put all this information. Now, this is information to help you, show you where the bleed is and the kind of safety area for text. Now, don't worry, this stuff won't print in your final design. In fact, if you look at your layers, which are over here, it says instructions, this layer does not print. And if I to toggle that on and off, turns the instructions on and off. So your design should go on this page. So whatever you do, don't unlock this um, layer. 
that should remain locked. If you don't need these uh, explanations, then you can always um, just bin that layer or otherwise just turn it off so you can't see it and leave it there. But make sure your, your design goes on that top layer. Now what's missing in this design is the Blur Book Creator doesn't allow you to create columns. So you'd have to go and do that manually. So if you need columns in your layout, it would be best to do this in the master page, which I'll talk about in a different tutorial. But right now I'm just going to click on the master page in the pages palette, which is down here. And I'm going to go um, layout margins and columns. Now the margins are already set up for you, um, which the, the uh, book creator has done. But the number of columns is set to one. Um, so I could set this up to four, give myself a gutter of maybe six pixels and hit OK. You can see it's just done it to this one page, but if I go back to uh, my design, you'll notice that it's on every single one of those pages. But if I needed it on both pages of the book, then I'd need to go back to my master A, click on this side, go layout, margins and columns, to that to four, and turn this back up to six. Oh, more. And then that would give me columns on every single page of the book, so on and so forth. It just leaves us one thing to do, which is to go File and Save. Thanks for listening, and I hope you come back soon to listen to more tutorials with me, Dan Duran. Bye.